today in our making of our cartoon. Like I said, we're going to do background design. We are going to be featuring the work of this man, Maurice Noble, right? So we're going to be, we're going to sketch one of his backgrounds, right? And then we're going to get into creating a background of our own for our own cartoon. I'm going to, I'm going to do uh, one of my backgrounds. You can put some color into it. We're going to spend about a half an hour on that and creating our backgrounds and then seeing where we're at. So to get us started, I thought it would only be appropriate to show an all-time famous Bugs Bunny cartoon. Uh, rays of physical hands. Who has ever seen Bully for Bugs? Bully for Bugs. Lorenzo, myself, and Lorenzo and myself. And Scott. All right. And... Wait, what was the question? Cat, have you ever seen Bully for Bugs? With Bugs Bunny and like where he's the matador? All right. So I mean, has seen it. Okay. So this is, I love this cartoon. It's absolutely hilarious. Scott, let's go ahead and roll Bully for Bugs. Please, sir. Yes. Come on now. Legendary. The left turn at Albuquerque. Now you know where that originated I'm in from. All right. Actually. Are you? No. <laughs> well, there you go. We so, there. so somebody took a left turn at, at your place. All right. So here, let's get into, uh, I love that cartoon. I think it's absolutely hilarious. The physical humor in it is hilarious. And just his scheming on going after the bull, the whole shotgun horns thing. All right. So let's get into a Maurice Noble background as we get into some background. So you'll notice with what Maurice does because I, I believe, no, you need to sit. I believe that he did believe for bugs. We are going to do a Maurice Noble background that has to do with uh, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner. So remember, we kind of went into this like inspiration, right? It's always good, especially as you guys who love animation, art, cartooning, that kind of thing, that you have a uh, real like that you get grounded in like reality on things so drawing real life stuff because I'm going to show you how Maurice Noble went from drawing real life stuff and how that ended up into his design that he did for his backgrounds right so I'm going to go Scott if we can go overhead cam and I'm going to pop down on this right there all right so here is in, in the actual desert right uh, here is the plant life and stuff that's going around it. Here is one of Maurice's initial paintings, right? So it has more of a realistic effect to it. And then as we go through, we take that and you can see from here, here's an actual um, stone structure, right? It's called the Bryce Canyon Tunnel. And you can see then how that influenced uh, Maurice's design. So this is kind of like that Bryce Canal or Bryce Canyon Tunnel, right? And those kind of sweeping turns like you have in here. So he took real life stuff and then he developed that into doing like his background design. And then you can see here's the sketch and then here's the final painted background. So I cannot stress the importance enough as I zoom out on this whole thing. I cannot stress the importance enough of being able to draw real life stuff and how that impacts what you guys do in your um, animation cartoon stuff just in whatever comes out of your brain so when you get a chance like if you're outdoors like you guys out there in albuquerque has some super awesome scenery right and uh, you got plenty of stuff to draw i go i go out to santa fe every once in a while and i fly into albuquerque um so draw what's around you and then you turn that into your own world so we're going to do this today, this sketch specifically. And I'm gonna have you follow along um, as I'm doing this here. And then at the end today, before we wrap, um, we're gonna get into our digital tools, what we like to do digitally and, uh, and work on it and share some of those things. So I'm gonna put my iPad over here. All right, so Maurice Noble was big on composition and design simplicity so that whatever he was drawing, um, or whatever he was painting in his background did not overtake the action that was going on screen. Do you want to sit up here by me? Okay, thank you. All right, so today we are going to get into, there we go. We're going to get into this Maurice Noble background and let me move this. So follow along on, on a sheet of paper. 
So what I like about Maurice's lines too is they all kind of, I know that's a mint, you can have that mint. Uh, they all have movement, right? It's all about kind of guiding your eye. So what I want you to do on your sheet of paper, I would have it done sideways. So if you have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, just make sure it's done like landscape, which is longer than it is tall. And just very lightly, very lightly, up to about half the page here, bless you. Just draw it kind of like a curved line, like so it's okay, like this is just light, right? It's okay if there's multiple lines, it's just the initial sketch. We'll go back through and darken this up. Which way so, should I have my paper facing? Uh, so you want you want it to be longer. So you, if it's 11 inches, you want the the long end to be like this and the short end here. So eight and a half by 11, you just wanna make sure it's landscape. Okay. Did that make sense? Yep. Okay. All right, so we have this line here. Now we've got another line that we're gonna do. We're gonna take our paper. And what I love about, if you look at Marisa's stuff too, he goes by that rule of thirds, which is splitting your paper into nine quadrants so it's three across three in the middle three on the bottom so we're going to take from about a third of the way up our paper and we're going to draw a line like so so this is this the beginning to where we have two hills that we're rolling Remember to keep your lines light because we're going to go in later and we're going to darken them up. All right. So in this, let's go ahead and start putting in some elements. So we've got a road that curves like so. And if you'll notice too in Maurice's designs, in perspective, right, the farther away it is, the smaller the road and then we've got it coming over the hill so it's gonna right about where we have this line here we're gonna actually comes off the page in the corner all right and then we've got another piece of the road right about here here and that's going to come down all right so you can kind of see we're already starting to see how the road plays out we go over the hill there's a little bend comes around the hill and we're going to we're going to go background to foreground so the background is what's behind uh, we don't have anything in in the middle which would be our midground and then we have our foreground which is in the very front of us so we're going to get our we're gonna get our um, Bryce Canyon structure here. In. And all I want you to do is to start out with some simple shapes uh, right about here. It's gonna be just a rectangle or a trapezoid. I'm gonna kind of follow this path up. And it's gonna come down here. All right, that's our rough guidelines for building out this canyon piece. All right, and then on the inside of the canyon, we're gonna do kind of a line like so. All right, because this is gonna be where, where our um, hole is, like what, what, we, what we would drive under. And on this, staying on this, curve we're going to go up and over and down so like so so what we what we're starting to put in now is a little bit of depth so we're like this is the underneath and we'll shade that in in a little bit here all right so that's roughly you can kind of see where it's already starting to take shape right So we got that in. Now let's rough in our foreground, which is going to take place over here. So this this hill right here is part of our foreground. Now Maurice designed this little piece like a cliff. 
comes off like so. And bends around. And then I'm not going to put any definition in yet, but we're going to do this peak that comes up and it goes over the top and kind of off the off the top of the paper like so all right that's kind of our rough guideline here for what we're going to pull off with our foreground now that we have the main elements in so you can kind of see even without putting any detail in um, we are able to we are able to see a clear line of where the action's going in the road we're seeing it's going underneath something and we got some foreground going on. Now let's go ahead and start to add some detail. Um, starting with the background. So Maurice has this really cool thing that he does. And I'm gonna put my road here and then you can kind of see there's a lip in it, right? Bring this down a little bit further. And if you notice on that curve of the road, you can go ahead and make your line a little bit darker on this. I'm going to pick kind of my final line. Just like in perspective where I start to see something as it curls around and then so it's showing me I've got a little bit of a lip there. And yeah, I'm going to bring this. They have to use that background for their cartoons. No, this is just to show you like how Maurice designed his backgrounds. Um, after this, you're going to design your own. So I'm going to design what I'm doing for my cartoon. You're going to do what you're going to do for yours. This is just a practice. I like to um, do reference drawings and stuff and draw some other people's stuff sometimes just so I can kind of get a handle on things. So we're drawing this just as an example. All right. And then we got a line coming down here. And the reason I'm going to stop that line there is um, in what Maurice does. So we've got an element that comes down. Like so. He's got a really awesome way of doing something super simple and making it look very impactful and I'm going to continue I'm going to take this line and I'm just going to darken this as I go up and then around the corner it so see that little piece there kind of just jogs up and heads straight down all right I know Rick and Ralph honey all right, and then I'm going to fill in this top line also. There's a little little divot in the, so right here kind of pops up and then connects to this line here. I'm gonna give you a second. Okay, and then at this point, I'm going to go ahead and connect this line all the way to the edge. So I've got my back line here. I'm gonna go ahead and darken that in because it's my final line. And in his design, he would have, you know, like I, I love the lines and stuff that he uses to, to show definition. So he's got these little lines that run, right? Kind of gives you the idea of moving this way. All right, now let's finish out the top. So like in any rock formation, you've got lines, you got little rock pieces that bump up. So I'm gonna fill this in here. And I just used my like trapezoid as a guide, right? So I have pieces Ooh, I just did say rock formation, like the rock. Anytime that we can plug that dude, we're gonna plug him. All right, so you can follow along here. I'm gonna move fairly quickly at this point. So 
Maurice worked with Chuck quite a bit, uh, not just on Warner Brothers, but in his like um, other films. Like I believe, did he work on Ricky Ticky Tammy? Uh, I'm not I've sure. I read the book. Did you read the book? Yeah. So again, I'm I'm no I'm moving fast here, but you can kind of get an idea for just doing how lines can make things look defined without being too complicated. All right. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna save a little bit of detail here for later as I'll get into it. I wanna get into the foreground. There's a little line there and I hope that pops out. So we'll go Bob Ross. Oh, it's not a mistake, it's just a bird. Yeah, we have birds now. Happy little trees, although there are, are no trees. Maybe we'll do a cactus. There's a question okay. if a black marker can be used to outline. Yeah, sure, you can use black marker. All right, so I've kind of got my structure here, right? <clears throat> and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my pencil and to show a little more depth in this and I'm just gonna shade in underneath. Like so. So that way you kind of get an idea of, right? And that already makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna concentrate on this side right here, cause this is pretty simple on this road. And then we're gonna fill in the rest of our foreground. So I've got the road here. And then just like in this piece, I have a line that shows that, that there's a little bit of height to the edge. All right, there we go. And I'll bring this piece over. Maurice puts a little notch up on his. Let's give it a little depth. I got a little deeper up. Okay. It's dinosaurs. All right, so just like that, we've got, honey, you're gonna have to move your book over here, okay? I understand that, and that looks super awesome, but I need you to move the book. You can take a look at it on the floor, or you can move my iPad and put it on the chair. Okay, so we already look like we have some dimension to this, and then I'm gonna finish off my road here, so I'm just gonna darken this line in. And again, I've got kind of like a little bit of a raise on the edge. And that is gonna help me as I connect this line. So here, here's the beginning of what we're pulling off, right? On the bottom over here with the, um, with the foreground. So you can see the lines, go ahead and darken in. I darken in my final lines later. I love Maurice's Southwest style. If you ever get a chance, as some of you already live out there, Drawing some of those Southwest features are absolutely gorgeous. Yuckers? What's that? Like drawing a yucca or something like that? Yeah, like yucca plants, even just your rock formations out there are super awesome. They just jut out of the land, out of nowhere. Okay, so I've got kind of where my foreground is here. I'm going to lightly, super lightly kind of shade that it's not going to be as dark as the underneath of that under uh, the uh, underpass there but it just gives it a little bit of a little bit of shading all right so now i've got this general shape here right and all that does is tell me that i've you know that i've got a formation so what i want to do is start to build this so i'm going to go from this corner and i've got a piece of rock that goes up 
And I'm gonna stop about right there because I have, in Maurice's design, he's got, got these super cool shapes. And this is where too, we're gonna be able to add some dimension to our drawing. I'm going to bring this all the way down. Like so. All right, so this would be like the, the flat face of my rock, right? And then I would show some dimension by doing this. And all of a sudden, it's got a little bit of a little 3D. Right, and then if I were to shade this slightly, you could make more of a definition between light and dark. Right, so already I can start to see like as this part of my rock lays flat, what that looks like. And I'm going to have another piece of rock that comes up like so. And another piece that comes down like this. All right, so simple lines, kind of give it some shape, right? And then I'll, I'll go back here too and I'll kind of shade that in a little bit. And then I've got my, my last piece of the rock to go. So we got our foreground. Right, we've got, which is this piece right here. We've got our background here and we can see where all the action's going. So in a, in a nutshell, and as I kind of zoom out a little bit, in a nutshell, that's what Maurice Noble pulled off in what he did with this, right? Same kind of thing. All right, so <clears throat> what's important about this as you can see that it's not super complicated. We have kind of interesting lines that are showing where our action is going. Um, and I can tell in the cartoon, like Roadrunner goes up and down and around and, and through this, and there's nothing kind of just blocking everything where I, I can't tell where the action is. Super simple. So how did we do? Do me a favor real quick. <clears throat> Everybody just, we're not, I'm not going to go around the table. I just want to see you guys. I'm going to go back to grid view. I want to see you hold up your background drawings. I'm not going to not going to go to anybody. Yet. I'm going to. I want to see what y'all did. Can uh, Scott? Can you do a screenshot of this? Awesome. All right, for everybody I can see on screen right now: Lizzie, Evie, Awesome, Simeon, very cool, Laura, Carolyn, Amin. Lorenzo, Tater Tot, Liliana, and Heather Rose, awesome. Sophie, Cat. Those look cool, man. Scott, are we good? Good. All right. So hang on to that because you guys did a super awesome job. That was a great sketch. Now I want to get into your own thing, your own background stuff. So if I, I think I'm going to go flower sack because. I might just finish this off. Um, if I look at my original, you know, we have our storyboards, right, from what we did. And we're kind of working off this from our cartoon. And I want to start to design out that world. So what does that world look like? In the case of my sack of flour, my world is two different shops and in a like a little main street, if you will, and a street. So I want to design that out. And I think what I'm going to do is take one of my opening shots. So I want you to pick a shot. Maybe it's the opening shot of your cartoon. Um, maybe it's kind of a general, here's how this world looks that my character plays in. So I'm going to do kind of a general main street view. I'm going to do go for a one point perspective just to kind of show when I do my wide shot, here's the area that they're playing. And so I want you to take one view, right? One action like one scene and do the background for that 
remember what we've used in shading in one point and two, we didn't really do two point perspective, but we did one point perspective, um, keeping things like as they move further away, the lighter they get, we are going to add color to this. So I'm going to start my horizon line is going to be on my lower third. And I want you to draw your, this is, you don't have to draw what I draw. I encourage you to draw your own scene. And I think my, my horizon line is going to be right there. And my point is going to be dead in the middle. All right. So this is your own thing. And when I'm doing my horizon line or my uh, point here for my perspective, all I'm doing is if you're doing buildings or an area, I'm just putting this through as a guide so that it looks like it should. And I can base all of that, all of my buildings off this so it looks right. And that way when I do my shops, it can be different heights even, but I'm keeping my lines kind of light. Usually I'm using a like a non-photo blue pencil. So all right. So this is kind of like a main street for me, right? I'm just getting my basic rough down so you're doing the same thing you're drawing you're sketching out whatever world that your character is living in um i don't know about you guys but i am totally stoked for next week and the i don't want to call it scott a palooza because we already have like doodle palooza sometimes so that would be infringing on something we're already creating um but I need it to be like spectacular. So we're gonna no Scott Day. Scott Day? But like all one word. No. Right? no, Scott is awesome day. Like all one word. All one word. I have a yeah. question. Yes. Um one more time for me. You, you cut out a little bit. Um, can you do anything that you want? Can you do anything that you want? Yes. So um, yeah, this, is a, this is about your, so whatever storyline. So it, uh, that's a good question. Here's what I'll do. If you're new, if you have not joined our class yet, or maybe you did one or two of them, you haven't done all the ones that we've done yet, we are making our own cartoon. So we did storyboards last time. Today we're designing out a scene in our cartoon. So we've got our characters, we kind of got what the action is and the story, and now we're designing out a background of our very own. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Who said Scotta Lotta? Lotta Scotta. Who did that? Is that Tater Top? Yeah. All right. So what if we did like Lotta Scotta Day? So I combined Sophie's with yours and it was all one word. I'm going to do a logo for that. And that logo, yeah, you can, you can have your video upside down, buddy. That's okay. Lotta Scotta Day. And it's all one word. And it's fabulous. We're going to caricature Scott and we're going to put him in a one frame cartoon with something going on. So just to give you guys a heads up for next week, we're, we're on, I'm on again tomorrow. And then next week is, I believe, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday also. And I think we're, I don't know which day I'm going to do it yet. I might do it Friday. I might do it Thursday, but we're going to do a lot of Scott a day. I'm so excited for that. Okay. So as you're getting your backgrounds in, right, I'll, I'm usually doing some just kind of rough sketching on some things to get an idea of how I want something to look and uh, I can fix it later.
I am going to go with the flower sack that's in love and has to cross the street. All right. So Scott, do you do you have like a hilarious situation ever happen to you? Like a story that you're like, no way, man, that I can't believe that actually happened. I'm just trying to get like some content for next week on what we would do for you. I think he blacked himself out and left. Look at that. Scott. Uh, I'll Scott's have to think about it. <laughs> okay. So, in your backgrounds too, what we'll do is uh, we'll take about another seven or eight minutes as you kind of get your sketching. If you are at the stage where you think you can put some color in, go ahead and do that. Um, mommy went over there. Um, if you are not and you just want to sketch out a little bit more, that's fine at about 2.50 five we are going to go ahead and show like if you would like to show we'll show some progress on where we're at with our background designs well actually about 250 because i want to get some time for the digital stuff Daddy, you said mommy's outside. no she's not you need to stay here oh where is she then she went to work all right so I'm gonna have a giant archway in mine, like you're coming into somewhere super awesome, kind of like Radiator Springs. Except for I don't think Radiator Springs had like a giant archway that you went underneath. So just gonna say welcome. All right. As we get into some stuff next week too, if you guys have some digital stuff, um, we're gonna do like traditional slash digital. So it kind of depends on, especially when you get into um, the flip book animation. So if you guys wanna roll that traditionally, you can. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have what I'm using for flip books if I do it traditionally up on for Tuesday's class that you could order for not next week, but the following week, if you wanted to, or um, you guys have some pretty cool app-based stuff. You could do that as well. Amin's hand is up. Yes, sir. Okay, everything looks horrible because I turn on light mode, and um, here's my, it's very simple. All right, that's cool. So tell me about that. What is it? Okay, so there's, I finished my storyboard. It's just that, uh, in my head, I finished my storyboard. I didn't actually finish my storyboard. It still has a lot of work to do. Okay. And scene, and this is a sidewalk, and this is the grass. It was really simple. I dig that. You know what I like about that, though, Ann, is, like, your lines are super clean. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, Crossy Road. Um, and I like, I like the simplicity of it because it's very – you can totally tell what it is. And you're not kind of just adding things to add things. Also, can I, if I'm finished with my background, can I get like a storyboard panel and then draw it on like this big paper? Sure. Go for it, man. Okay. okay. Got my little sign here. All right. So as we're going, we'll get about another five minutes and see where you guys are at. And you should name your town Cityville. 
could name it. Are you talking about yeah, I mean? No, I'm talking about your drawing. You should call it Cityville. Cityville. Let's see if I can put it on. And then we'll just do like a little USA. There you go. Super tiny, but there it is. All right. feel like we should have soundtrack music. I am looking forward to whatever Tater Tot did for Scott in the Lot of Scott a Day tribute, which apparently has a theme song also. Man, there's nothing but love for you here, Scott. All right. And for those of you just watching the video on this afterwards and you're like, who is Scott? Like, what are you guys talking about? I've never been on this. Scott is only, I think what we can all agree on, one of the coolest guys ever. And a genius whiz with all the technology. All right. So... But another um, three minutes, and then we're, I'm going to go around the table and see who would like to show any progress that they're working on on their piece. Okay. Here's Samantha. Samantha, let's go to Samantha. Hey, so um, yesterday I changed my story. And so I'm going with the robot. Nice. Going with the robot. Um, and so the background is, so there are two siblings. There's a brother and then there's a sister. Each of them make the kit, make a robot kit. Um, and what the boys is this one and the girls is that one sweet so that was with my storyboard and so this is the background Ooh, nice yeah each hold, hold right there yes, yep. and stickers to like show their personality and here's the borderline because they hate each other they're feuding <laughs> Nice. Yeah, and also I didn't want to get into copyright laws, so I did Bye Kitty instead of Hello Kitty. Ah, look at you. Very clever. Yeah, and also this isn't for this story, but for an animatic that I'm working on. This is, um, I did these yesterday. Sweet. So what program are you using? Um, this is actually Ibis Paint for um, okay. just the thumbnails and everything. For the actual storyboard, I'm using Storyboard Animator. All right, awesome. Well, we'll have, we'll have to share that app that you're using for that too when we get to it. There's uh, one called Procreate, and then if you guys are on Instagram at all, a guy named Otis Frampton, and you spell his F-R-A-M-T-O-N, and Otis Frampton is animating in Procreate, and he's doing some unbelievably wicked backgrounds. And then just some very cool animation. And I believe Otis has the Jawa adventures. So if you love Jawas, and who doesn't love a Jawa? Um, he is animating the, like, or he's doing these like faux covers, right? So that doesn't really exist as far as it's not published. But um, it's called the Jawa adventures. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with around the table. So if you would like to, like Samantha, if you would like to show your piece, um, go ahead and pop up that digital blue hand. Here's Sophie. And we will. All right, Sophie, let's see what you got. Okay, but I'd also like to mention Scott is an amazing artist. This is the character he created, by the way. What? I didn't know Scott created a character. Yeah, remember when we were doing the tag draw? Oh, yes. you're right. That yeah, it's it's almost like we should make it into a t-shirt. He it is was, an amazing yeah, artist. That tag. 
<laughs> nice. All right. Ooh, lovely. So tell me what's going on here. Um, so I'm going to have a fight in an alleyway, so I'm drawing it right now. I haven't done that. I, yet. That's okay. I love the one side of it. That looks cool. And then you have a, is that a fire hydrant in the back or a trash can? a trash can, actually. I love the little trash can. Little stuff is cool. All right. Very awesome. Thank you, Sophie. Liliana and Heather Rose. Liliana and Heather Rose. Okay. Here's mine. I dig. So tell me about that. Uh, I guess this is just the uh, the evil guy's castle. Sweet. Man, you got some detail in there too. I dig it, man. Very uh, cool. Here's my. Oh my goodness! Look at you. What's oh? Is this like a? So tell me what I'm not gonna. I'm not this gonna is um, the, guess. Um, what's it called? This is the uh, main character's home city. Sweet. And what's floating at the top? It's a bus. <laughs> I, I was hoping or, it was. I'm like, please tell me it's like a floating vehicle of some sort. Yeah, it is. That's awesome, man. I love how that's laying out. And I love the building design too. Like the, especially that little kind of bubble when you got with the two antenna things sticking out. Like that's awesome, man. Very Thank cool. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Simeon. This is mine. Like uh, this is the one at the, at the beach right here. Sweet. Yeah, but I'm going to make another one where they're escaping onto the ship on in the night. I love it. Yes, let's see that. Very cool, man. I dig that. Thank Good you. job, Simeon. You're welcome. All right, Scott. Laura? Laura. Um, so I did mine digitally, but like if the screen share will work, I will do it. But if it doesn't, I'll just um, let's see if it. Can, let's see if it works. Scott, can we do a screen share with Laura? Uh, yes. I think she's going to have to initiate that. She knows how. She's my okay. sister. <laughs> All right. There you go. It's up. There we go. Is it working? It's working. I'll fix that in a minute. But, um, so, so far, I have this and it's basically going to be a few planets in the sky and then some stars in the background behind and then it has a bunch of greedy greeny, greenery behind it that's cool all right man i dig that i love the digital aspect of it too man you're going right into color very cool man thank you laura you're welcome all right scott where are we headed next here's cat all right, cat. I'm looking at the chat. The video goes. Here's mine now. Awesome. So tell me what's going on. There's the tree here. I did the best. My neighbor took down trees. Copy on. Sweet. And then I did a vine and like a flower for my butterfly to fall into um, like my storyboard. This very first scene here. Like I do. And there's Pat. Okay. I'm gonna add cool, man. Flowers and vines. I'm going to see and say. I dig that. And the sun. And Very cloud. cool. Well done, man. I like it. Cloud. I think you did a great job. Thank you, Kat. Oh. All right. Next up, Tater Tot. Tater Tot. So I drew the point where at one point Crow is going to shove Pip off a cliff. Um, that's odd. Did you use half tone paper? Yep. Look at you, Tater Tot. That's awesome, man. Thank you. I, I totally dig it. I get the depth, too, with a cliff, and we have just the trees down below. That's awesome, man. 
Thank you. Impressed. You're welcome. Cassie, I wouldn't want to get like chucked off that cliff. <laughs> All right, Cassidy. Uh, here's my drawing. I'm not the best at drawing cliffs. That's okay. I thought you did great, man. I dig the cliff. So what else do you have in there that I can see? This. Nice. This. Uh, well uh, done, man. Love the background. Yeah. Very cool. So what happens in that action sequence? Well, th this is like near a dock area. So we have a lighthouse over here. Okay. And then we have the light. Sweet. And then whenever there's a tsunami, there's a horn for that, an alarm to okay. die. All right. Awesome, man. Well, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Well done. Where are we moving next, Scott? Carolyn. Well, I'm, I'm trying to do a replica of Chicago. Welcome to my world. Absolutely. Are you from Chicago? Um, yeah, there's everybody come from chicago no i think like i'm in schaumburg which is just outside chicago i think we only have like a few chicago people on here so that's cool so let me see your drawing again there's just there's just a few buildings i like, dig it do you have the sears tower in there too yes that's supposed to be the sears tower i totally guessed that that's awesome. That's very cool, man. I love the whole layout of the city. That's an awesome style you got. Yeah, I mostly like the the beaches. The beaches, yes. Looking forward to getting back out onto the beaches here soon. Very cool, Carolyn. I dig it, man. Thank you. All right, where are we headed next, Scott? Anyone else? If you don't want to right now, that's totally fine. Lorenzo's got his hand. Lorenzo. Spotlight Lorenzo. Room. All right, so I did the bank, and I'm trying to do Jeff's. Um, I'm try. I'm gonna draw Jeff looking at the bank and seeing the cookies inside. <laughs> nice. I love that, man. Very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Awesome job, dudes. So, um, if anybody else wants to show while we're doing that's fine. Just let us know. Pop up that digital blue hand what I would like to do as we close out today is I would like to share a couple of apps that I use and then I want to write down a couple of apps that you guys like using um, on your iPads on your tablets whatever you got so let's see one of my favorites my all-time favorite Scott if you could go to overview is I like Procreate. So Procreate, let me get back to my gallery view. I like Procreate for the brushes and stuff. So like there was a piece that I did here when I was doing my six fan art pieces, right? And I drew each one of these um, by hand and then I took a picture and I popped it in here and I inked over that and did all my color. So what I like about Procreate is I've got layers that I can use, right? I've got um, a whole ridiculous load of brushes. So from pens um, to drawing, calligraphy, painting, all that other kind of stuff, I really like um, I really like Procreate a lot. So Procreate is cool. Um, let's see, is there anything else interesting in here? Probably not. What's that? Did you do Darkwing Duck? Is that? I did. I did do Darkwing Duck, um, but I think I did Darkwing Duck in. Adobe Sketch. I don't think I did them here. So like my monkeys and stuff, right? I did that in Procreate. So I inked all that and then did the color. So I dig this. Let me see if I can. Do I have Darkwing Duck in here? Um, can someone type the name in the chat so I can see if I can put them in my box? Because it would be here to see them. Sure. I'll have. So I'll have. Uh, 
I'll have Scott, if you can type in Procreate. So Does Procreate um, cost money? It, it does. I think it's like five bucks. No, so, I, I looked it up. It's not, it's $9.99. Oh, did it go up? Ooh, all right. I bought it when it was $5. All right. So some of these apps cost a little money. Obviously, check with your, uh, if you, if you do not control the finances, check with the ones that do. So uh, Adobe Sketch, which I like a lot. So Adobe Sketch is a lot of fun. It, again, it kind of mimics um, some natural drawing abilities and stuff like that. So here's my Darkwing Duck. So there's my Darkwing. I'm able to do like a blue line sketch underneath and then uh, my color and stuff on top. So there's those two apps. And then what I wanted to show you guys, and then I will open this up for your recommendations is, so here's my, here's my kind of um, creative app section, right? ZenBrush, and I, I, I think, I don't know which one is free. One of these is free. And then Animation Desk. So ZenBrush is fun because it's kind of like a Japanese um, ink brush. And then Animation Desk, they have two different versions. I believe they have a, um, I believe they, not now. I believe they have a, a free version of this. So this acts like <clears throat> animation paper and a pegboard where you can draw over the top and then you put another piece of paper down. You've got inks and stuff. Let's see if I can move this over a little bit. You've got ben, all different ben, kinds. Do you know if these are Apple specific or do you know if they're available like for Android or Windows? I, I believe some of the, I don't know about Windows, but Android, they should be like iOS and, um, and Google Play or like Android available. So most of these I, I see on both. Um, this is Animation Desk and then they have Animation Desk Pro, but you can add sound, you can categorize your projects, you can pick all your different tools here and then you can animate. And I don't know if I have any, I don't know if I have any, no, I don't want to sign up. I'm gonna get out of that. So I had a project, but I just got this one upgraded my iPad so that it may not be in here. Anyway, I was able to do a bouncing ball. So when we get into like flipbook animation and stuff like that, we're gonna do a bouncing ball. I may do the bouncing ball on this and show you guys how that works. So those are the apps that I, I really dig. Um, if you wanna check out Procreate, Adobe Sketch, uh, ZenBrush and the Animation Desk Classic is what I have, the classic one. So. I'm gonna leave that up to, we'll go back this way, Scott, if you wanna to go to main view. Um, does any, what else do you guys like to use? I heard some cool flip book stuff. Um, so go ahead and like pop up and tell us what you got and then go ahead and type it in chat too so everybody else can see it. So who Flipboard wants to- Flipboard animator. Flipboard animator, okay. No, storyboard, storyboard animator. S storyboard, all right, let me write that down. Storyboard animator. And Samantha, was that you? Yes. Okay, Storyboard Animator. Is that a free app? Um, what device are you using it on? It's free and I've been using it on my iPad. Okay. So if you guys have iOS um, or, or, I mean, if you have Android, check the Google Store, you might see it on there, Storyboard Animator. I'm gonna check that out. What, there's a Flipbook one. What Flipbook one did you guys recommend? Somebody did. Flip a clip. Flip a clip. All right. I don't know if Flip the Clip is free, but I will check it out. All right, anybody else? Does anybody else have a, an app that they really enjoy using? Lamborghini has his hand up. Yes, what's up, dude? So I just wanted to share my, so I just wanted to share mine. Wow, man, you got color in there and everything. So, uh, I kind of designed this basically after the game I have on my PlayStation. It says 2, 12 a.m. at world 566.75.587, to be exact, for True Valley. Well, nice. that's basically the world in my game, and I also put NFS Payback. All right. Very cool, man. I did that's that. That game, even, I'm like an eight-year-old, and I get, still get to play it, even, even though it's for teenagers. Very cool. That's all right, dude. Very cool. I dig that. Well done on your background, man. Wait, I'm not, not done. And Elsa's like here in, in this world. She's an enemy to Shadow, and she wants payback. So she wants to fight Shadow here, and then Shadow uses her his supercharge to blast her. And then...
as a supercharge is not strong enough to save her life. So, as you can see, her supercharge is fading away because that. But Shadows can save himself, and plus, Shadows ultimate life form, so he never dies. And so, this is Shadows super fire crot Shadows fire crot school and base. Man, you got a lot and going then on there, like, Tyler here, which is the character in Need for Speed Payback. And then there's the character who Scott created, Ben 2.0. Very cool, man. You got a lot going on in there. You did it pretty quick. That's awesome. Thank you, sir. jump over to Simeon. All right, Simeon. Okay, so this is mine. Nice. So tell me what's going on in that in that first one in that right in the middle. So basically, I'm 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 finishing up my storyboard inside of it. They're, okay. they're trying. They they use the old umbrella to escape into to onto the pirate ship. Awesome. I dig it, man. Oh, well done, Simeon. Thanks. You're welcome, buddy. All right, dudes. So that wraps today. Um, we get in tomorrow in characters, right? We're going to draw out like some final designs of our characters and add color to them. Um, we'll probably bust out a Chuck Jones character to start a little bit. And then we're going to concentrate on what we're doing. And I'm going to continue to kind of like rotate it around a little bit to see how it's all coming out. So um, I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday. Uh, awesome drawing today. Loved everything that you guys did in the reference drawing with. Bye. Um, Maurice Noble, and then in your own stuff. You guys have some wickedly cool imagination. So have a great afternoon, Anne, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Later, guys. Bye, Ben. Bye. 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 Bye.